Awesome. Looks like we've got a full house in our webinar today. So I um, want to welcome everyone to our Ethosystems Continuing Education Series on RoundSage Intact. Today we're going to have a, hold a special one on sa Salesforce integration. Um, we are running into this more and more every single day in the construction world where people need a good CRM to track their leads and opportunities, create those jobs, keyword, create those jobs and projects within Salesforce, and then move that over to Sage Intact. So um, we're today we're going to have Ben Technology and we're going to have Chase Freeman from Ben Technologies do um, the part of the presentation once I get past the logistics. Um, my name is Stuart Blumenthal. I'm the Intact Practice Director here at Ethosystems. Um, just a couple logistics aspects. Uh, the presentation is going to be around 30, 40 minutes. Um, we're going to have a live demo in there, so lots of key, lots of time for Q and A. So always use the questions features within the system, uh, within the go to uh, meeting, go to webinar, and it makes our life a lot easier. Um, we'll be monitoring that throughout the presentation. Um, also, all the phone lines are muted, um, so you're going to have to use that. Um, so ask any questions there. Also, if you like a copy of the PowerPoint presentation when it's done, just put your um, email address in the questions feature and I'll make sure to send you the PowerPoint upon completion of this. We'll also post this up on our YouTube channel as well. Um, we also have a lot of other upcoming webinars going on with here at Ethosystems on the Sage Intact product. Um, so next next Thursday, same time, same channel, um, we're going to have our 2022 R3 release where showing a bunch of the new features in the system. So please feel free to sign up for that. Uh, the following week, we actually have another one on GC Pay for the, those general contractors out there. GC Pay is kind of a staple in the uh, industry and the community, and they have gotten the Sage Intact integration complete and done really well. And so we're excited to show that to um, clients. Um, the following week, we're, or following two weeks after that, we're going to do smart rules and smart events. Uh, Sue Walworth, who some of you have worked with, is going to be training, teaching some of the cool things that you can do within the system, some um, rules and stuff like that to really accelerate the product um, beyond just accounting and construction. And then last but not least, on October 13th, we're taking a few weeks off. Um, we're going to be doing one on tips and tricks on using timesheets. Um, if there's any other trainings that you want, uh, please let us know. We've got the end, through the end of the year schedule, but always looking for a great content for next year. So with that, I am going to turn it over to Chase, and Chase lets you uh, talk about why Salesforce and Intact are the best together. Absolutely. Guys, thanks for joining today. Appreciate, Stuart, you having us on. Um, love any opportunity that we get to talk about uh, the collaboration that each of our teams is capable of. Um, so I, I run a, a, an award-winning team that uh, can do magical things. Um, <clears throat> we're also a Salesforce registered consulting partner. We implement Salesforce. Um, we have a team that builds integrations on, uh, uh, as another practice. And between those two, there's a lot of synergy uh, when we bring in uh, Stuart's team. Uh, to make these systems connect. And so what you typically have, right, is your sales team and Salesforce, they're doing their own thing, they're running their own deal, maybe they're you know, doing some crazy stuff, maybe there is some process around that. But then you have your accounting team that is usually like the, you know, the shield hitting all, getting all of the, the, the turbulence or whatever, you know, whatever analogy you can come up with, um, where they're the recipient of whatever the sales team is doing. What we like to do is, is take both of those sides of the story and meld it into one single workflow. It gives you that real visibility from start to finish. They call it quote to cash, quote to order. There's several you know, uh, catchy names for it, but essentially it's from you go from lead all the way through to getting money in your hand into the bank account. And that's something that we, we really focus on because if you're on the accounting side, you know, if you're one cent off, well, something is off. And in the sales world, you know, the sales guys are like, yeah, it's one cent, no big deal. 
Um, but we, we side with the accounting folks because we recognize that there is real value in data that is right and correct and everybody can trust. Um, so what we've done is we've essentially streamlined that sales to cash process that allows us to move data from Salesforce into Intact and then potentially into other systems like Stripe or another payment processor or, or maybe to a database. Um, but ultimately it brings back the invoices into Salesforce so the sales guys can see you know what the accounting team is doing and of course when payments get posted uh, the sales team can see that as well and then if you want to get you know if you want to get real big on accounting controls we can pull in you know AR adjustments debit and credit memos you do advances so the sales team you know can see all the work that um, if, if you're on the accounting side that you you know that you guys do all right Stuart let's hit the next slide <laughs> Okay, so this is a um, this is an interesting topic because it's really really important in today's world. Everybody has I've got one client that wants to integrate eleven different platforms, um, and so what we like to say is, yeah, of course you've got your technology, but a lot of this is about the people. The people have to know how to use the technology. You know, they have to be knowledgeable, capable willing and wanting to do it right and then there's the process i i can i can spin up you know salesforce real fast and i can teach you how to use it but if you don't have a process a proven process or you haven't put it down on paper and it's stuck in your head it's not going to work out well um so we love to get into situations where we've got all three of these um because if you don't right if you have maybe a technology that doesn't, doesn't have an api well, you need to get Stuart on the phone and talk about moving into Intact or something that does have an API. Um, everything that, that we do, um, we need some sort of API to move the data. There's, there's some caveats to that, but generally speaking, um, that's, that's the first part. On the people side, um, obviously I said we need people that uh, understand what they're doing, but we also need people that know what they want. Um, you know, sometimes you, you go in the grocery store and you're like, I want some cereal, but you don't know which one. And there's, you know, 80,000 different choices and you take forever to figure that out. Well, a lot of our clients don't know exactly what they want. So on the front end of getting into any kind of technology process, it's really good to sit down and just, hey, high level goals. These are what this is what we want to do or these are the problems that we're trying to solve. You'll be shocked how many customers come to us and say, hey, we got a bunch of money to spend, right? Let's let's go do this awesome thing. And we're like, well, what, you know, what what are we trying to solve here? And they're like, well, none of it works. Um, and then lastly, the process, right? If if you can't, if you can't click the buttons and show me how you want it done, I'm I can't, you know, magically write code that is going to do the same thing. So this this is probably the hardest part for a lot of folks because it's so easy just to you know get in the motion get into motion and and as an individual you've got your workflow and this is how i do it every day um unfortunately it doesn't scale <laughs> my team has learned that very quickly that we have to do we have to have a process uh we've got a five-step methodology for doing projects and we do it the same way every time because if it's all in my head i can't you know, my, my team can't pull my head when I'm on the beach sipping, uh, you know, sipping whatever next to Stuart and we're hanging out. We never do that, by the way. We're always working, of course. Um, yeah, the, the last thing I'll throw here is this last point, data, data where data should live, determine where data should live. This is a really interesting thing these days because data can live in multiple places and it can be mastered in multiple places. I think what what you guys should focus on in, in this case is, is as far as the data goes, the people that need to see the data, that that data needs to be in the system that they use. Um, and so that makes for some interesting scenarios where, you know, that the accounting side needs to be see very specific stuff and the sales team needs to see other data on the same table. The what we'd like to do is is try to have one single master of that table regardless of the system and then have a process that moves the data and shows the data to the right person at the right time so that's it on that slide what else do we have questions to ask um this is there's a lot of questions that we get 
Um, this first one, the source system, how many records can the source system provide per day? This is really about a volume question. Um, it, it really determines the type of integration that we're gonna build. If you're on the accounting side, you know summary versus uh, detail, right? If, if, there, if you're in detail, you have more records, you have the ability to dive deeper into reports and, and you know, glean insights from all that. It takes up a lot of data. It also takes longer to sync. Um, if you go with a summary method, right, just give me the, the daily balance, um, whatever that is, every day, and we'll just update it every day. You lose the inside, but you gain speed, and you gain, uh, you lose the risk of, you know, one of those detail records failing. So there really isn't a limit here. Um, where the limits come into play as far as volume of data is really uh, what the provider or the platform will charge you to push, you know, X amount of records. There's not a limit. What we like to do is determine what do you guys need, right? It goes back to that process. What do you guys need at the end of the day? Do you need the detail? If so, let's talk about volume. If not, the systems that we build can handle hundreds of thousands of records every day, um, millions of records every month. Every database that we've worked with doesn't really start to struggle until you start talking millions of records in, in a day or querying millions of records. There's this idea of data skew um, that I'm not going to get into, but really this, this generally speaking, hasn't really ever been a problem for any of our customers. Um, now, when you get into the enterprise world, for sure, you, that's something you should worry about. Um, simultaneous connections. So I think this question kind of goes into Intact does have the ability to support multiple streams of data flowing in at the same time. Depending on how you build your integrations, it will, um, it, you can open up multiple connections. It's, it's like having, you know, three, four phone calls going on at the same time. What we do is we actually only utilize one single connection and we push data through consecutively allows us to push a substantial amount of data without, you know, significant delays. Um, we don't like to use multiple connections, probably because it, it costs more. A lot of these, um, uh, a lot of the platforms that support multiple simultaneous connections will charge you for that. So we try to do the least uh, invasive and we use one connection. Um, but it's certainly a possibility, right? I, I don't think you'd use multiple connections unless you're kind of in that enterprise space. Um, what happens if source data, source system, if the source system goes down for maintenance? This happens all the time. So I had a, uh, I had a customer one time ask me, Stuart, you might have been there. It's a joint client of ours back in the day. Asked me in, in the middle of a table, a round table, high ups, C-suite folks, and he legitimately asked me, what are you gonna do when the internet goes down? And he's, he said it in a way where it was like the entire internet, what if the entire internet goes down? And I was like, dude, if the entire internet goes down, well, we're all, you know, we're all hosed. Um, in reality, though, what he was really trying to say is what if, what if Intact goes down for, you know, for a day, or what if Salesforce, you know, drops offline for a minute? In fact, Salesforce, if you guys have Salesforce, they had a service, cloud issue pop up yesterday that that was pretty pervasive. Um, anyway, what we like to do is build integrations that can self recover. Um, so that's our goal in in the event that we can't build that the what we want to do is give you the user the end user you're in Salesforce you're in an intact the ability to recover it yourself. Um, we like to call them self-contained integrations. So if something goes wrong, the source system, Salesforce, which is what I'm about to show you guys in a live demo, the source system would get an error message back and it would record the error message in Salesforce. Um, so if, if a user goes in and says, oh, hey, where's my, you know, where's my project or my customer record, they'd at least be able to see that there was an error and there's an error message. Um, and then if, if we're in the self recovery, you know, the intact goes down for maintenance. I think every Friday night, um, you know, those are windows that we can catch. But what, what ends up happening is we just query for the records that any records that happen to get, you know, created at the very last second, right before the maintenance window goes down and we just pick those up. Um, if the integration goes down, um, it actually, when, when it gets turned back on, We'll go back to the the date, the timestamp that it was down, and grab anything that 
that was missed. So generally speaking, we don't have a lot of integrations where we miss data because of some sort of maintenance. Um, the, the last question here, can we update the score system with audible information? Uh, this is like our biggest um, uh, ethos, part of our methodology. We, if we can't track the data from start to finish, we're going to have an incredibly hard time sorting things out, you know, in, in when we're debugging or when we're trying to test stuff before we go live. And so this is one of the very first things that we talk about and how we're going to how we're going to do this. The the source system needs to maintain the master, you know, the master ID. We talk about unique identifiers. You want the neat unique identifier to to you know, be passed along to every system that we're going to touch, whether it's a, you know, just two systems or three or four or five, you want to be able to connect those across the board to any number of databases. So when some sort of audit comes by, maybe it's a, you know, an accounting audit, or maybe it's a, you know, just a technology audit. Hey, I need to come show me all the, you know, show me the place where Chase Friedman exists in all your databases. Well, you may not use the, you know, you may not use my name in all those databases. Maybe you've got a medical database running and it's anonymized and you've got that unique identifier. Anyway, I'm bobbing here. The, the idea is that we keep track of everything that we can to ensure that if something goes wrong, we can bring it back. And what that ultimately means is if an auditor did come in and say, hey, give me a report. I want to see how everything connects to Salesforce. You already you already have all that data. You just have to build a report and you know spit it out. So um, we build every 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 single one of our integrations has that audible information. So uh, if you can build it without them, I wouldn't recommend it though. All right, what's next, Stuart? Yeah, remove ambiguity. Um, this this is uh, this goes to the people thing, right? The sales team talks about things one way. We talk about things another way. Even in Sage Intact, you've got very specific uh, terminology that, you know, is, might be something different in just in the general accounting world. You know, you've got sales invoices and sales orders, right? Um, AR adjustments, advances, all those things, um, but they've got dimensions. Um, they've got, you know, different field names that represent, you know, maybe something else from Sage 100. And so it's really important to speak in this at the same level. So here's one that catches us often off guard is, hey, we wanna sync the invoices over to Salesforce um, and, you know, and keep track of the balances. Well, great, we can absolutely do that. Um, in Intact, you've got two modules that both have the same types of invoices. And in the order entry module, you have SO documents, sales order documents, where you can have a transaction definition that, um, that is called sales invoice, or you can just call it invoice. And in the AR module, you actually have a standard object called invoices. Uh, and so in some cases, we've gotten stuck uh, actually building out the wrong stuff because we didn't clarify, oh, you wanted, you, you wanted AR invoices, not, uh, you know, SO documents was the table name. Um, so it's really important to say, I, I want items and departments and you know this and that. You can also relabel things, so that can be challenging. Some of the dimensions and some of the things can be relabeled. So if you do that, I'd come up with a key to keep track of that kind of stuff for anybody that's going to be you know working on or in and around your system. Um, if you're gonna be building out integrations or your team's gonna be doing it, this is, um, and, and you're kind of like on the outside, not touching the keyboard here, it'll be really important to have object mappings. I'll show one of these here in just a little bit, just a high level, like from Salesforce, the account will connect to the end customer and it's a bunch of boxes with arrows. We do this for every project because it keeps everybody on the same page. We can keep the terminology, you know, uh, on paper. Um, oh, and I did talk about relabeling, right? You can relabel things too. Uh, um, and then this last point, communicate required dimensions in advance. There are, uh, there are a number of things that make projects challenging. And one of them is required dimensions. The other, you know, is, is things that we didn't think about on the front end, but now we need to do. And in TAC, you can enforce validation with smart rules, um, which are great, right? You can have control over what does and doesn't get posted. Um, 
but those are gotcha. So if your team is building those out, making forcing requirements, the, the integration team or your team that is building integ integrations need to know those or they're going to run into a lot of errors when they're testing. Um, this last one, I don't know if this is really a question, um, but what we like to say when it comes to, you know, can you connect whatever to Sage Intact? Intact has a very robust API. It allows us to touch every part of Intact, even things, some things that you can't do in the UI, we can do through the API. And there's some, there's some caveats to that. Um, but really, we, what we like to say is that we're experts in APIs. So with Stuart and his team and his knowledge about Intact and the way and the recommendations that he comes up for, for his customers, right, we're able to push data in from really any system that has some sort of API. REST API, there's a couple of other versions. REST is probably the most common. There's really not a system that we haven't been able to pick up data from. Now, the catch is what is the API support? And that's something that we are gonna do on the front end if, if we're gonna chat ever. Um, that's something we'll do on the front end to say, hey, this, this thing does have an API, but it only allows us to uh, get stuff from it. We can't create anything, right? So that could really limit the possibilities. Um, so we're, we're really experts in reading the documentation and understanding what it can and can't do. What we will say, and this is full of disclaimer, we're not CPAs. I need Stuart and his team to tell me and my team how to get Intact set up, right? We don't do, we don't do uh, configuration of systems with the exception of Salesforce. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, yeah, so we can really connect anything that has an API. That's pretty much the end of that. All right, Stuart, what do we got next? Are we on the demo? We are. So I'm going to make you the um, presenter, and you should be able to show your screen and be able to uh, take us in um, Salesforce. Sweet. And of course, guys, give me just a hot second. My preferences, because it did a little update, and I knew that was going to be problematic. So I'm just updating my preferences here. I'm going to see if this will let me do it without having to quit because that would be really painful. Let's see what we can do. Oh, yep, I got it. Cool. Here we go. Here we go. Sweet. Didn't have to quit and come back. All right. So I've got a, I think you can see my screen here. I see it in a little diagram. I've got a diagram up. Um, this is just an example of one of the things that we're capable of doing. Um, so my demo, I'm going to focus on something actually that's not on here, just like creating an order inside of Salesforce and pushing it over to Intact. But I wanted to give you kind of an idea of what, you know, some of our integration projects look like. Most people think that it's just, you know, Salesforce and Intact, uh, Salesforce and QuickBooks, Intact and Stripe, you know, like one to one. What we're starting to see a lot of is kind of three and four way integrations that move data from one spot to the other and then it circles back all the way back to the beginning. <laughs> Essentially giving you kind of one cohesive um, tech stack, right, where everybody knows what's going on um, from the sales team to the accounting team to the rev ops team, right, everybody's in the loop and knows and, and can see from wherever they operate, right, what what the status is of that one particular one particular customer um yeah so i'll come back here in just a second let's hop into salesforce so if you haven't seen salesforce before this is a, a demo org that i've got uh, salesforce gives us plenty of sandbox sandboxes to play in and i'm on the account record here up in the tabs you know if you have done anything with salesforce this might this might look familiar we're in the lightning version um where it just looks and feels a little bit faster. Um, but on this account, right, we have the ability to create them as vendors and in intact. We might be want to create them as employees for this particular scenario. I actually checked to make sure this worked earlier today. Um, we've got a customer identifier here, right? That unique identifier that I was talking about. This is the thing that we want to push between every system. Um, if I was going to, you know, move this over to Stripe, we'd want to pull up this customer and see this same ID. We have the ability to, you know, sync things on demand. Uh, so I'm going to click a button and we're going to see if we can sync this guy right now and get an updated timestamp. 
Um, this will update any changes that were made. We can trigger things to run automatically. For instance, I might change the address for my customer and you know the accounting team needs to know that too because they might be the ones you know fulfilling or shipping out orders or they're connected to the team that does. Um, so we have the ability to you know automatically resync the customer when those changes happen. So let's see if we can refresh this page. Click on the customer tab, synced, got an updated 25 here. So this is in a slightly different time zone depending on where you're at. Um, yeah, so in this particular scenario, these guys, Upstyle Inc., they uh, they want to order some products, product A, product B, really specific, right? Uh, if you've done anything with orders, this is the standard order object that's part of the CPQ package in Salesforce. Essentially, they want to order some stuff, right? Maybe we don't have it right now, um, but what we want to do is get this over to intact. So we've got all of our details, of course. Now my you know, my screen's pretty light because I'm don't. i not necessarily filling all of this out. <laughs> but our ability here to take the order in, somebody in Intact converts it over to a, you know, to a sales invoice or potentially converts it by line item, right? We can bring those invoices back into Salesforce. So Upstyle, you know, the account has all those invoice on it and all the payments. Um, Effectively, whatever you want to bring over from Intact, we have we have actually probably already done for somebody else. All right, so let's go ahead and sync this. This is all live, so if it bombs, um, I'm going to chalk it up to being a Thursday. Keep it a second here. Might hop over to the to this guy real quick. What we're doing, so this sales says sales invoice, um, but it's actually the same module in Intact. We're, we're kicking something over and creating a sales order, we do have the capability of having a bi-directional sync, right? So maybe some invoices get generated manually and intact, and we want those to go back into Salesforce, we can do that. We can get into the details, right? Each line can go back and forth. Um, maybe you've got the sales team just randomly going in and updating stuff on your invoices, and maybe that shouldn't be happening, but you know, you're not in a spot yet where you can lock that down. We can we can help make that happen. Um, yeah, so all of these things we can bring back and forth and have done for other folks. So let's see if this order has made it through. Synced, there we go. So here's that auditable information, right? We use a middleware tool to make all of this happen. So we've got links to everything. We've got our timestamp when this happened. We've got the record number in intact. So if uh, you know those auditors pop up and they want to see record numbers, we've got those. And we've got our document number. It's for number 81. Let's copy that. We'll hop in here. We'll go over to order entry. This is intact. If you haven't seen it before, I've got a demo environment where I think I have everything enabled. Um, so yours might look a little bit, uh, not, you know, may not have as much. I'm going to go into the order entry module. I'm going to click on orders. And I'm just going to hop into my sales orders. This is where I mentioned you can have like, you know, hunt many different transaction definitions. We've got a ton in these demo environments. And I'm just going to look for document 81. There it is. Let's pop this guy open. And we've got product A, product B, five, quantity of five, quantity of six. All right, from here, this is where you can convert it to a sales invoice, the invoice can come back into Salesforce. We could push the invoice over to Stripe uh, and get a payment link. And you can do that kind of pay now button functionality where the customer clicks, you know, clicks on it, makes a payment and the charge gets created. And then we can bring that back in as an AR payment. Essentially the, the workflow, this is where it comes back into that people process and technology. This is that process piece where you guys might be thinking, hey, we need to push this stuff over into Intact. We're actually, you know, a step beyond that. Okay, we've got it in Intact. Now what can we do with it? Maybe we need to simulate, um, you know, recurring invoices, or maybe we need to create a subscription in Stripe um, for you construction guys. Maybe we need to keep track of project costs and time entry. Um, these are all things that we have done before, especially in the, the CRE module. Um, yeah, I don't think there is. I don't think there is a module in Intact we haven't touched uh, and we haven't integrated with. So really, the possibilities are endless. 
which is why I go back to the people process technology, right? Figure out what you want first, because if you don't know what you want and uh, you're not talking to us, somebody else might be like, hey, this is what you need. And you know, you, they, don't have, they don't have an idea of what you're looking for. So that's probably the most important thing in figuring out what, what this should look like. Because when I, if you and I got on the phone and we were chatting about this, right, this diagram, it's a WYSIWYG, I'll, you know, I can move everything around. I can make this look um, exactly like you need. So um, yeah, so I, I guess that kind of wraps up the demo, guys. Um, short and sweet, just to give you an idea of what, what all is possible. Um, uh, contracts, order entry, we've done CC transactions. Um, we do summary, uh, summary and detailed GL batches. We've got this kind of unique thing where we do uh, hybrid summaries. Um, customer contact i mean you name it there isn't there isn't anything we haven't done uh data warehousing um we've done it all Stuart, i'm gonna hand it back to you you want me to stop sharing my screen and you're gonna pull something back up i've already uh already taken care of that part so that's that that part's easy there so thank you so much Sorry. one question um, that came in was the fact that um trying to read this right here what's if they're interested what is the what is the best way of getting started so if they don't have they say they don't have salesforce what is the best way of getting started with a project like this and understanding the scope and magnitude of something like this yeah i i would think about three things um you, you it's very difficult to self implement these days um there's just so much that is possible in these platforms now you can choose a, an easier platform of course um, but if you're really hoping to scale or grow big, Salesforce is the leading CRM. So I'd look at that. HubSpot is another big one that's kind of picking up steam. Uh, it's not as capable, but when you do some pricing, you know, some pricing uh, guidance, you'll 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 see that there's a significant difference uh, in, in some of the versions. Anyway, both of those are great options. So pick your tools, right, or have an idea of what you're looking for. Get some demos. Uh, in or just YouTube it. Um, it's easier to YouTube it than than try to find, you know, get somebody to get on the horn. Uh, you don't necessarily have to have pricing right before you come to the table. The second part is um, find somebody that's done this before. It is, I can tell you, we have we do projects where we've never done it before, but that's probably because also nobody else has done it before. And those are the most challenging. So you want somebody that has experience in doing exactly what you're talking about. So ask for references i've got plenty of customers that ask for hey can you connect me to um you know uh um, an agricultural banking uh customer that can you know talk to what you guys are good at we've we've got that all of our customers love to talk to to other folks and share insight and you know all that good stuff um and then the third part is data migration that's probably the the thing that will bite projects in in the booty you need to be thinking about data integrity. What are you going to bring over? Do you want to bring it all over? It, if you want to bring it all over, you better have a big budget, right? Um, if you're, if you can keep it simple, just do accounts and contacts and opportunities, or maybe some of your deals. That makes it simple. But if you want to migrate an entire database, there's there's just a lot of little tables that many folks don't think about that add into the cost that make the make it really complex. Um, we actually like to automate. The migration from one database to the next right if you're coming off of a legacy system we'll connect directly to the database we'll build out effectively an integration that moves the data from one spot to the next and then we'll run that integration over and over again on the sandbox um so going back to people that have done it before right um the last piece of that is the the data integrity what you're gonna if you're gonna put bad data in you're gonna get bad data out right it doesn't magically make it any better in fact a majority of the work that we do something that is specifically out of scope is manipulating your data that we're gonna bring in um you know i don't, I don't know your customers you don't want me touching data there um so if you know you've got bad data you you should get on that now uh you know months in advance because that will just slow down the implementation process or it you know it'll it could make for a failed implementation because the the data isn't good enough and you know regardless of the people 
and, and the technology, you just don't have good data and therefore, you know, you really don't have a successful project. Mm -hmm. that's, that's a great question there. I think I'm trying to see if there's any, uh, last question, is there a kind of a budget that we should be thinking about? I know that's yeah. a question there. A loaded question. Um, I'll, I'll give you an honest answer. You know, a majority of our projects start in the $20,000 range in terms of services, there is an annual cost that is very specific to how much you wanna do. Um, we have a variety of ways to make it work. Um, you know, the, these, we're not talking giant dollars here. It's really, it comes down to what can you get by with or what is the least amount that you we can do to get you up and running? Because we can always add on more down the road. Um, so in terms of budget, right, 20,000 is probably the bare minimum, and that doesn't give you everything that you've even seen today, right? It's, there's a cost to get Salesforce up and running. Stuart needs to put food on the table. We need to put food on the table, right? So 20 grand is, is probably spinning up Salesforce, you know, and then it goes up from there. What I would focus on is coming to the table with, I need to have my accounts over as customers and my invoices over an in intact and I want the items to sync and that's it. Like if you can come to me and tell me those things, I can give you a budget that won't, you know, won't uh, bust the buckle. Um, yeah, so kind of goes back to the, you know, the people process technology, figure out what you want before you, you know, go to order it. <laughs> Perfect. I think that's it for the question. So again, just uh, make sure that everyone understands, um, you know, if you do have any questions along the way or afterwards, please feel free to reach out to myself, reach out to uh, Chase. We've got uh, our email address up on here. So I want to make sure you can uh, reach out to either one of us. Chase, I really appreciate you and Ben uh, for what you guys do and, and more importantly for doing this webinar today. Um, you guys have been a great asset to us here at Ethos System and really helped us out when clients are looking for that CRM integration with, um, with Sage Intax. So very much appreciate it for everything and your guys' professionalism over the years. Um, with that, I'm gonna let everyone go today. And uh, again, feel free to reach out with any questions and really appreciate everyone's time. All right, man, talk to you soon. See you guys. Yeah.